Hello, my name is Larry Oliver. I'm going to be reading a section today from a book, a delightful book entitled, Yeah, Dave's Guide to Live in the Moment, Getting to Ecstasy Through Wine, Chocolate, and Your iPod List, written by David Romanelli. The selection I'm going to be reading today is entitled Learning the Soul of Wine, and I'm going to uh, truncate it a little bit, but if you do get a chance, pick up a copy of Yeah, Dave's Guide to Live in the Moment. Uh, it's a great light read. Learning the Soul of Wine. Nobody grows old merely by living a number of years. We grow old by deserting our ideals. Years may wrinkle the skin, but to give up enthusiasm wrinkles the soul. Samuel Ulma If you're a novice to wine, many of the terms, history, and varietals can be very intimidating. Since... I've started presenting yoga plus wine workshops. I've often needed to step into the circle of wine pros who can be very snobby. Maybe you've got a friend or two who are self-proclaimed wine pros. At first, those types made me nervous. What if they challenged my wine knowledge in front of all the people who showed up for my yoga and wine workshop? Now I've discovered a four-step plan for the novice wine dicker. But now I've discovered a four-step plan for the novice wine drinker to appear like an experienced aficionado. It doesn't require a trip to wine country. It doesn't require a tasting class. It's so simple that nine times out of ten you'll look like a master when sitting across from the table from a wine pro in a fancy restaurant. My four-step plan just requires a strong finish, much like an Olympic figure skater who's nailed all their big jumps and simply needs to complete the routine to win the gold medal. The first step is to pick up the glass from the stem rather than the bowl. When holding a wine glass from the bowl, you instantly give away your lack of knowledge because Your hand has an ill effect of warming the wine. The second step is to gently swirl the wine around the bowl. This does leave the potential to spaz. I mean, if you swirl too fast, the wine can splash out of the glass, which is like the figure skater falling on her face during an easy part of a routine. There's no need for that to happen. Be soft and smooth in your swirling motion. The third step is to smell the wine. The swirling action releases aromas that you're supposed to sense. So dip your nose close to the glass and pretend like you've picked up a scent. Appear neutral in your reaction. The wine might be amazing, and it might be terrible, so by maintaining a mysterious air, you won't reveal your lack of knowledge. If you've made it this far, You are oh so close to that gold medal. The last step is to taste the wine. Take a sip and let it coat your tongue and stay in your mouth for a moment before swallowing. Then look directly at the person you're with and stare him or her in the eyes for five seconds. This will help you create an attitude of sophistication. After five seconds is up, say a fruit with at least three syllables, but definitely not two syllables. For instance, boysenberry, or raspberry, or pomegranate. You're saying what you taste in the wine, and a three-syllable or four-syllable fruit comes across as much more complex than a two-syllable fruit. Now, if the person you're with is also a novice, you're home free. Gold medal. If the person you're with is a wine snob, you need to be very careful here. The snob may ask you if you like the wine. Don't respond. 
keep the wine pro off guard by pretending you might, or you might not like the wine. Then you excuse yourself to go to the bathroom. As you leave the table, continue staring the aficionado in the eyes as if to say, I will not be intimidated by you. Go to the bathroom and leave the aficionado to sit and wonder. Wine aficionados like to sit and wonder. Now, I've cultivated this technique because I'm often around aficionados who quiz my knowledge, but there's a much deeper message about wine that goes well beyond the tasting. It is the message of aging. As Dr. Andrew Weil discusses in his book, Healthy Aging, wine, cheese, violins, and antiques are a few of the limited list of things that age well. Granted, some wines are best when opened one year or even one month after being bottled, but wine always requires some amount of aging so that its flavors and tannins can evolve. The same goes with human beings. In American culture, we place so much emphasis on anti-aging that it's difficult to remember Aging can be a noble process, allowing time for maturation, wisdom, and perspective, all of which encourage a deeper sense of spirit. Therein lies the trick. Now, I believe you can best tell a person's age not by a skinny body or smooth skin, but rather by the vibrancy of their spirit. For instance, Sometimes you'll be around someone really old, yet you sense something about her fresh perspective that's eternally young. And other times you'll be around someone really young whose droopy perspective makes him seem really old. So the question is, how do you tap into an internal source? I'm sorry. How do you tap into an eternal source of vigor and excess and assess the true fountain of youth. It's all a matter of spirit. So, with that, I'm going to jump ahead just a bit to get to the meat, what I believe the meat of Romanelli's thought is here. And he continues with a couple other examples and stories and comes then to these last couple paragraphs. A Chicago Tribune study showed that every human being has an average 30 genes that are predisposed to disease. Now, hopefully, these genes remain dormant your whole life. When they are triggered, it's often related to stress. When we go on a work binge or we sustain stress for days at a time without any period of rejuvenation, we might just trigger one of those dormant genes to wake up. A human being is not built to sustain stress day in and day out. The body requires time to depressurize and rejuvenate, which not only feeds a vibrant spirit, but also protects against potentially dangerous disease. Feeling and feeding the spirit might not smooth out your wrinkles or tone your thighs, But whoever said drinking from the fountain of youth was cosmetic surgery or an eight-week workout? Drinking is the key word here. Next time you drink a glass of wine, particularly a wine with some age, know that your greatest knowledge about wine is not the flavor or the region or the varietal or the olfactory notes. Your greatest knowledge of wine is that it ages well. If you can recall that message in every sip, you will be the ultimate aficionado, not of wine, but of life. General Douglas MacArthur said, You are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your self-confidence, as old as your fear, as young as your hope, as old as as your despair. Examine the ultimate symbol of youth, a little baby, 
and you'll see the baby is free from what MacArthur described as doubt, fear, and despair. Such negativity rusts our joints and erodes our dreams. The little baby is born as an advanced yogi with no effects from life's friction. She can lift her foot to her mouth or cross her legs in the most flexible manner. But what's most intriguing is not the baby's soft skin or Play-Doh-like freedom. Rather, look in the baby's eyes. They are strikingly similar to the eyes of a vibrant 100-year-old man or a jubilant 57-year-old woman. What they share is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm to taste. Enthusiasm to seek. Enthusiasm to dream. And as John Barry And as John Barrymore said, you don't age until your regrets outnumber your dreams. So dream on. Thanks for listening.